Hi and welcome back to freesciencelessons.co.uk. By the end of this video you should be able to describe how to investigate the effect of light or gravity on the growth of newly germinated seedlings and this is for triple biology students only. Now this is a required practical so it's important that you learn the details. In the last video we looked at how plants use the hormone auxin to control their growth. In this video we're looking at how to investigate this. We're going to start by investigating the effect of light intensity on the height of seedlings. So in this case the independent variable is the light intensity and the dependent variable is the height of the seedlings. First we place cotton wool in three petri dishes and then soak them with equal volumes of water. The volume of water is a control variable. We then place 10 mustard seeds in each dish and again another control variable is the type of seed. Next we leave the dishes in a warm place and allow the seeds to germinate. We need to water the seeds every day with the same volume of water. After a few days the seeds will germinate. At this point we need to make sure that the three dishes have the same number of seedlings and that's because the number of seedlings is another control variable. For example imagine that only eight seeds germinate in one of the dishes but ten seeds germinate in both of the other dishes. In this case we'd need to remove seedlings from two of the dishes so that all three dishes now contain eight seedlings. Next we use a ruler to measure the height of each seedling. We need to hold the stems to make sure that they're straight. However we need to be careful not to damage the seedlings. Now we place the three dishes in different conditions. One dish is placed in full sunlight, for example on a very bright windowsill. One dish is placed in partial light, for example at the back of a lab. And finally the last dish is placed in darkness, for example in a cupboard. We then measure the height of each seedling every day for at least five consecutive days and record the results on a table, such as the one I'm showing here. When the experiment's finished we calculate a mean seedling height for each day. We should also draw diagrams to show the effects of different light intensities on the seedlings. I'm showing you here some typical results for this experiment. As you can see the height of the seedlings is similar for both full sunlight and partial light. That's because chlorophyll is very efficient at absorbing light energy, so plants do not need full sunlight to grow. However you'll notice that the seedlings have grown towards the light source. This is due to phototropism and we looked at that in the last video. Remember that auxin concentrates on the side of the seedling furthest from the light and causes this side to grow faster. If we look at the seedlings in the dark we can see that these have grown the longest. That's because seeds usually germinate underground and they grow rapidly to reach the light. If we keep seedlings in the dark then they continue to grow rapidly trying to reach light. You'll also notice that the leaves are small and yellow. That's because once the seedlings have used all their energy stores they cannot carry out photosynthesis in the dark. Okay now we can also investigate the effects of gravity on seedlings and I'm showing you that here. In this case a dish of seedlings is placed on its side in the dark. As you can see the shoots have grown upwards against the direction of gravity and the roots have grown downwards towards the direction of gravity. As we saw in the previous video auxin inhibits cell growth in roots. Gravity causes auxin to build upon the lower side of the root. This now grows more slowly than the upper side and this makes the root grow in the direction of gravity. Remember you'll find plenty of questions on this required practical in my revision workbook and you can get that by clicking on the link above.